Welcome to the show. I'm Julie Pasquinelli with Maricopa County Environmental Services Department. I'm talking today to David Guerreri, Vector Control Supervisor with Maricopa County Environmental Services. Hi, David. Hi. Hi, nice to see you. Thank you. Um, well, let's start with the first thing. You work for Vector Control. What is yes. a vector? Anything that can transmit a disease from one host to another. Mm -hmm. Typically, we use the mosquitoes as an example. Mm -hmm. They take a blood meal and then they 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 have West Nile virus and then they transfer that to the next host, which mm -hmm. would probably be could be me or you. Okay. Um, but it also includes uh, rats, um, flies, um, anything that those are more mechanical transfers where they go stepping in stuff and then they go stepping on your on your countertop and then you put your ham sandwich on <laughs> that and then you have a chance of getting uh, salmonella or E. coli from that. Okay, it sounds like. Um really a matter of cross-contamination where they're Correct. maybe getting some germs or something from outside and when they make their way inside they bring them in mm -hmm. to your house yep. okay um so we have some stuff here that i recognize regarding roof rats now are roof rats still a problem in maricopa county they are gonna always continue to be a pro uh, problem um there's not a magic pill to just, you know, get rid of them, one and done kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a constant vigil, um, especially with our with our environment, with the pools, with all the vegetation, with all the um, with all the citrus around. They um, they've adapted really well to the environment. Well, where did they come from? Um, they came from, as best we can figure out, uh, New York. Okay. <laughs> they hitched a ride. Okay. And how um, did they make their way here? Someone, someone from New York could have been moving. Okay. Um, or they could have been shipped over uh, from uh, uh, from pro produce uh, um, trucks or, or any number of things like that. Okay, so they're, you said they adapted well, so obviously they're not native to here. Correct. But there are some rats that are native That's correct. to here, and what are those? We do have uh, the pack rats, mm -hmm. and they live in the desert, mm -hmm. um, but because our houses back right up to uh, preserves and, and washes and stuff like that, and we like, to, we like to feed birds, and we like to feed our dogs on the back porch, and, and things like that, the, the pack rats are are coming up into the neighborhoods. They're getting their meal and then they're taken off. So as just a regular homeowner, or a resident, um, would I be able to tell the difference between a pack rat and a roof rat? The, the biggest difference is the tail. Okay. Um, the, the, the tail of the pack rat is probably half the size of the body where the tail of the roof rat is the entire length of the body. Um, so and the roof rat will have a much some, longer tail. Have a much longer tail, exactly. Okay. And they use that tail to swing around because they are aerial. They mm -hmm. like to be up high. They like to be places where they're where that's where they feel safe. Where a pack rat will stay closer to the ground. Okay, so a pack rat would probably, I'm guessing, uh, maybe find a meal and then scurry back into the desert. They probably don't want to hang around in the Correct. homes. Mm -hmm. Whereas the roof rats, we tend to hear that they will kind of make your home their home they can live in the attics again they'll live anywhere where they feel safe um, along with uh, transferring of uh, diseases like salmonella or e coli mm -hmm. they also like to gnaw on things i don't know <laughs> if you can get a good picture of this but you can that? see the this is just typical house wiring and you can see all the gnaw marks you can see that the uh so they that the roof all the way was, through yeah so they they can really they do can some cause damage. a lot of damage. Okay. They can get into your car engine compartments, you know, during the winter to, for warmth, and then they can start chewing on things, start nesting, mm -hmm. and then they start electrical problems. They could start electrical fires. Um, so that you know they they are something that the homeowner should be concerned about if they have roof rats in their area and roof pra roof roof <laughs> proof your property. Roof rat proof my property. Yeah. That's a Say tongue that twister. Three times fast. Okay. So aside from the electrical problems they may cause, what are other signs you can look for that you may have roof rats either on your property or already in your house? Um, places where they may hoard. Um, sometimes it's an odor. Um, they, they give off a, a pretty distinctive odor. Mm -hmm. Is um, it, could, would you be able to compare it like moldy or musty or like any, anything? Kind of. 
y urine. Okay, okay. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, good to know. So we know we know what to smell for. <laughs> so when we, okay. we smell it, we'll know, oh, that's roof rats. I, ha I may have a problem. I need mm -hmm. to do something about this. Um, any other signs maybe around the property or, or n any other damage they do? Um, again, the citrus. They okay. like to, uh, they'll eat citrus. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times property owners will see a, 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 an orange or something mm -hmm. and they'll see maybe a couple little pecks in it mm -hmm. and they think that's a, and that's a rat. That's probably a bird. If a, if a, if a roof rat's going to eat the fruit, he'll hollow out the entire thing and just leave that peel. Oh, that sounds weird. So you can really, <laughs> you can really, it, it's really obvious. Okay. When, if you know when you're looking at that, you can tell that you have a, you've had a roof rat on your property. Okay, um, and you mentioned that they like to be up in trees yep. and above, like off the ground. I mean, mm -hmm. any idea what that has to do? Like, why would they want to do that? Just where they feel safe. Okay. Yeah, just All where right. they feel safe. All right. So, um, will they build nests up in trees? Um, they can. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. So they might be up there with the birds. Up in palm trees. Okay. Um, and a lot, a lot of the movement today from roof rats is um, honestly coming a little bit maybe from uh, from landscapers. Mm -hmm. They will they'll okay. get up in palm trees. They also have a problem with with uh, bees too. So if you're a landscaper, uh, uh -huh. be careful out there. But yeah. um, th so the landscaper will remove will remove branches and tree prongs and stuff like that throw it in their truck and then they go to the next neighborhood or they go down the street and then rats have uh, roof rats have like hitched a ride with them so they're hitchhikers yep. moving all over the valley yep, exactly okay. um so if i wanted to prevent them from coming into my house what's the best thing i can do uh, if uh, if you feel comfortable in doing it yourself, you you know you can screen up all the entrance points, put caulking and steel wool around places, you know, mm -hmm. all the cracks and crevices. Anything bigger than a quarter, mm -hmm. the roof rats are going to be able to get into. Okay. If you are um, uncomfortable with that, or you're, you want to make sure you do a good job, then I do recommend a, a professional. Okay. If you're going to use pesticide for uh, to try to get rid of rats, I, I, I suggest a, a, a professional. Um, pesticides are not what we consider target specific for, for, for rats. Okay. So um, any kind of a child or a dog get hold of rat poisoning and it's very, and it, it'll kill them. Now you did mention that they like to be up in trees and up off the ground. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I should cut all my trees down? Anything that will hang over your house or hang over another tree that'll hang over your house, mm -hmm. you wanna you wanna make a barrier around your house. Mm -hmm. um, so and that's either for you know good for fires mm -hmm. for for w almost anything. Okay. You want that security bear barrier. So anything that's leaning over your property or onto your house, you want to make sure you trim that back. Okay, so it's like they use it. Maybe they'll climb up the tree and on the branches and use it as a bridge yep. to get into your house. Mm -hmm. well. Okay, so as long as you keep your tree trimmed back, they can't go from the tree through all the air into your house. Correct. Okay, now you did mention bees just a minute ago um, as another issue that vector control mm -hmm. deals with. So um, what, it, what is it that you can tell me about bees? Well, um, bees are not a vector. Okay. Um, but they were placed onto our uh, statute again uh, a few years ago. And if, if you have a, uh, an allergic reaction, some people uh, respond quite violently to uh, bee stings mm -hmm. and they can actually be fatal. So because of their significant health risk, um, the, the, they were placed in our care to, take, to, to look at. And we're talking specifically about feral Africanized bees. Um, anything that's not being maintained by a beekeeper, um, because they're, 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 they are different from your European bees. Now, how are they different? The Africanized bees are um, a little more aggressive mm -hmm. and they have a bigger hive. So where if you disturb the, a European bee to where they would actually come and attack you, they may attack you with you know hundreds or, or, or maybe a couple thousand bees. Where uh, an Africanized hive, if it was to come to a, if you were to attack them, um, they would attack with thousands, tens of thousands of bees. 
Um, oh, the so, African ice so bees. So huge, huge swarm. A huge difference, yes. Yeah, um, okay. 10 stings per pound, something along those lines are actually fatal, can be fatal to somebody. Um, the African ice bees, while they produce honey, they do everything just about the same as European bees. They, uh, they get aggressive quicker, mm -hmm. they get angry quicker, mm -hmm. they stay agitated a lot longer, and um, um, but they won't hunt you down. A lot of times you see in the movies, you know, these killer bees chasing mm -hmm. after you. Yeah, yeah. That's just in the movies. Oh, okay. You know, okay. it's just in the movies. So there's really no way just a regular person like me, just by looking, can tell the difference between an Africanized feral bee or a regular bee. Correct. It's in their behavior. Correct. The Africanized bees are actually smaller than the European bees. Okay. Um, and so, but I don't recommend uh, finding that out. Just let, we usually take them to a lab if we really okay. want to check so that out. So you just approach them all as if they're Correct. feral bees and yep. you don't even take the chance. Yep. Okay. Um, so if I see bees around my house or even say I'm out hiking and I see bees, is there anything I should do or shouldn't do? If you see bees on your own property, they're your responsibility. Okay. We're not an emergency responser. Um, um, so if you're being attacked, then you need to call 911. Okay. Um, if, uh, if you're out hiking or if you're out in the neighborhood in the park or something and you see bees, by all means, you call us. What we do is we, uh, we try to find the property owners, a responsible party, mm -hmm. and then um, and have them remove the bees. If they can't or are unwilling to, then we will get a contractor and we will take care of the bees. Okay, well we do have a few more questions and we do have some questions from the public that we would like to ask about roof rats and bees. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with those questions. Thanks for joining us. Um, before we get started with our questions for the public, from the public, um, I'm looking at the table here and I see some traps and some peanut butter. So, um, what is all this? This is kind of for the the homeowner, the property owner, the to do it yourself kind of person who wants to do it themselves and and try to collect the rats themselves. Okay. Um, uh, we we have the the good old fashioned. Uh, uh, Rat traps and mice traps that we've we've all seen in the past. And it says no cheese. I thought, these, rats, I thought they love cheese. <laughs> these are a little bit. They do, but <laughs> they love other things better. Um, okay. But so these are made specifically for rats. Um, again, the the tensile strength on these are really strong. What's tensile strength? Uh, the, the way it snaps back. Just okay. So um, if uh, um, if you're not careful, it can break a finger. Um, but basically, okay. we take one of our traps mm -hmm. and uh, we throw a little peanut butter on it, and the rats will come right to it. Okay. Um, this looks like it's not this as lethal. Is a, this is a live trap for those mm -hmm. who are squeamish about that. Okay. Um, and if they, they, they can catch them live, obviously. The, the problem with catching a live um, rat is now you've got a live rat, what are you going to do with it? What do you um, do with it? You cannot just release, you, you can't take it out into the desert and release it because it's a non-native uh, rat. Um, so I do hear people taking, catching rats on their property and then going over to the preserve or going some, into another neighborhood and releasing them. Mm -hmm. um, we, yeah, that's, that's bad. So okay. we, we really discourage that. We don't okay. want to see that. Um, this looks like a trap too. I've never seen one like and it's, that. And this is kind of, this is just like the snap trap, mm -hmm. only um, it's a little bit modern. Um, the, the, the peanut butter would go on here okay. and you set this back and it just snaps it. Okay, would that break your finger as well probably? Uh, yeah. Okay, all right, I'll it would hurt. from both. <laughs> okay, um, you know, we do have some questions um, that I, I would like to get some straight answers for our public. Mm -hmm. um, and the first one is, how do I know if I have roof rats on my property? What are like the telltale signs you know these are roof rats on the property? Um, especially if you have a lot of citrus again, um, look for that hollowed out fruit. Um, because they like, uh, they like to be up high, they use their tail to swing around. So rafters, if you see like smudge marks and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that could be a sign of roof rats. Um, if you find like a, a nest or a hard, uh, where they're hoarding, um, or even uh, like, a, a, like a strong smell of urine or something mm -hmm. like that, or 
you know, gnawing marks or hose where they've where okay. they've been at. So whether it's like the electrical wire like this, or maybe even the side of your house or the walls mm -hmm. of your house, they'll mm -hmm. just chew and chew. Yep. Again, anything bigger than a quarter, they can get into. Okay. Um, this one is a very interesting question, I think. Why don't you put up traps in the alleys like you used to? And I, I do remember many years ago, I live in the Arcadia area, mm -hmm. there were these plastic tube looking traps on pretty much every utility pole. And I really don't see those anymore. And why aren't those? And I was going to bring one to show it today oh. and I forget all <laughs> okay. about it. Um, well, when, when roof rats, when we first found out we had roof rats in the valley, we were concerned again about, about what diseases they might have, how far they've spread. And um, so we set these traps everywhere. We set 10,000 traps. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, the sheriff's department helped us out with it. We had people from other environmental services and from other departments come and and, and people from the from the um, from county health just mm -hmm. come and set these traps oh, everywhere. everywhere and yeah. they were everywhere what we found out was when we went back to them a couple of weeks later nothing had they hadn't been touched all that work had been for naught um, and because there was so much material out there for them to eat they had no reason to go up onto a onto a telephone pole and crawl into a into a um, canister and, and pull out so it was easier bait. for them to just take all the citrus that had fallen off the yep. trees it's on the ground well I'm on the ground I'm just gonna eat the citrus I'm not gonna climb up there to see yep. what's in there yep. oh, and um, we realized that it was fast becoming uh,